Welcome to Masters of Regeneration Radio. Conversations with humans who dare to reimagine our place on planet Earth. Earth is changing fast. Evolution happening in real time. An intimate, circular understanding of nature and living systems. We are the land. The land is us. Welcome, everyone, to episode 23 of Masters of Regeneration Radio. Our guest today is Regi Domingo. She's a conservationist and content producer. She works in documentaries and for several organizations. Um, where Before we dive into that, Regi, thank you for making the time. Welcome. Of course. Yes. Thank you for reaching me out. Um, before we get started with every, everything that you do, I, I would just love to... Talk about talk talk to the audience about why it's important to protect predators around the world. Like all the reasons. Obviously, compassion could be one of them, right? Many people are moved by compassion. But there are reasons that you know very well that you're very familiar with on why it's it's vital for our survival to protect sharks. Okay. So well, first of all, um, Sharks are an indicator of health for our oceans, for our planet. Um, they've been misunderstood for many, many years because of like different type of films, bad press, and of course uh, a lack of understanding and knowledge about about them. So I think first of all it's important uh, to protect any species, not only predators. Um, but in that case, uh, predators in general have been overfished, at least in, in the marine ecosystem, in, in numbers that the ocean cannot afford anymore. Um, the ocean has a role. The ocean has been shaped and created in a way that was working uh, without us in the formula. And sadly, humans thought that uh, those species didn't mean that much for the health of our lives, right? Like, we don't relate sharks with oh, like uh, oxygen. We don't relate sharks with an economy. We don't relate sharks with the, you know, food. And in reality, they are the ones that um, regulate. And in in a way, we call them the doctors of the ocean. They eat the sick and disease. They eat um, the chains that are below them, in order to create, uh, you know, a healthy ecosystem and to have a a, a thriving ecosystem. So they have been overfished for different um, reasons. Sharks have been overfished mainly uh, back in the 90s or 80s because of their fins, because a lack of understanding and also an education about um, the pro properties of, of, of that fin itself or the cartilage inside of the fin, mostly in the Asia, um, in the Asia, you know, yeah, parts Asian of countries, the world or, yeah, yeah, or countries. But with time, uh, different managements and, and decisions that uh, governments and conservationists and people made uh, was to, to say, okay, thinning itself, like just the action of taking the fins and throwing the body out was not sustainable. And then uh, it was implemented uh, a law that was the fins attached law to protect these predators, right? Yeah. Uh, to make it more sustainable. And then we started to eat predators, to, to put fillets of these predators in our dishes and plates and, and, and food. So predators in our diet uh, is something that it's not natural. Yeah. We should not be targeting a species that uh, is more powerful than us in the, in the role in this planet, because they are. And we should not be targeting a species that it's a key for a healthy ecosystem, and we should not be targeting a species that be accumulates mercury. So I think it's important nowadays to protect uh, any species, but most of all predators, in order to have a healthy planet, in order to have a healthy ocean, in order to uh, give back to an ocean that has been feeding most of two thirds of the population on our earth, 
and that it's one of the ecosystems that bring us climate, oxygen, and economy. It's one of the most sustainable, you know, ecosystems that gives job to m most of the humanity in the world. So I think there's a lot of reasons to protect them. Uh, and of course, also, one of the reasons needs to be uh, love. Uh, we should understand that in the moment that we lose love for species, lose love for our planet and for our ecosystems that are our support system, we lose love also in our hope. We lose love in our, you know, future. So Absolutely. in the moment that people start loving more nature and loving more nature is understanding it and reading about it and understanding why every single species is a key in our, you know, world puzzle. Um, I think it, this is also need to be a reason. We should love every single species. It's not that a spider or a snake or a shark or a crocodile are worse because they look ugly. That's yeah. that's completely not not right. We should go beyond this. And I think we are intelligent species uh, enough that we create so many things in, in our story or history in order to understand that every single species is in our it's in our planet uh, and that we should share with them the reason that we are all alive and respect. And love is one of the first uh, things we should work with human or humanity nowadays. I hear you. I hear you. We sort of we do to to the environment and to the natural world what we do to ourselves, right? And we clearly have a huge lack of self love these days. And there's something going on. We need to reconnect to that idea that we are nature, right? That we our life depends on it. Can we? Okay. Could you could you tell us could you dive a little deeper into how sharks do those three things that you mentioned? How do sharks give us air to breathe? How do sharks promote biodiversity, right? And how do sharks matter so much for the economy? Just okay. so they like to recap and the audience really gets a a, a so, cr crisp picture of yeah. So first of all, their main role in the ecosystem is to eliminate the sick and disease. So they just don't feed because they are hungry. They have a role. They target very specific uh, species and individuals that are sick or they have diseases and they control the populations of other species that are below them in order to create this cascade that we really need in order to arrive to the bottom of the ocean. The ocean is huge. It's, we have more ocean than Earth. So. Yeah. We don't see what's happening beyond there, but we have forests and those forests are corals and reefs and little tiny species that also are controlled for the big ones. It's like if we eliminate the lions in the savannah or if yeah. we eliminate the gorillas in a jungle, those species are there to regulate the overpopulation of other species. The problem on us in humans is that we don't we are not letting the nature to be the our regulator and we are overpopulated and thank you so for saying we, that <laughs> we are missing this top predator to mm -hmm. really teach us a lesson mm -hmm. and it's out there in the ocean you know they yeah. teach us that they are in different shapes in different you know um lifespans we have more than 425 different species of sharks top predators each of them has a role, each of them eats something concrete in order to regulate this ecosystem. So first of all, like ecologically wise, they are crucial. Second, um, economy wise, there's so many people in this planet that nowadays relies on ecotourism. Mm. Shark uh, ecotourism brings mm, millions of dollars in many, many places for a lot of families out there that rely on this, um, you know, resource alive. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a shark alive brings more money than a dead shark. That's a fact. A shark alive worth more than a dead shark. So if we analyze this into an economic uh, thought or way, if we remove the sharks, of course, all these ecotourism platforms are not going to have work anymore. But most of this, we are going to lose other species. 
there's a lot of people in our planet and, 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 and communities and countries that rely on seafood as a main protein. If we remove sharks of the formula, we're losing other species. And it's all what, mm-hmm. what's already happening. Okay. Yeah. So then um, we are missing uh, a key um, species that is bringing us not only food, but oxygen because it controls other species below them that create that the floor of the ocean is healthy and a reef is healthy. And then after we are, we are missing it all. It's a economical um, indicator. It's a healthy indicator. And of course, it's a wild indicator. We mm. need predators in our planet to understand that we are not the ones. We yeah. really were, we, we, we were not brought on this planet to be the predators. We just thought that we could be that we could be them, but we are not. We don't have this role. That's why we we cannot swim fast as a mako shark and go deeper as you know a pelagrine shark, or we just don't feed on krill. Who is gonna make this role when sharks are gonna disappear? We didn't think about it. We yeah. just like use them as economic resource on on fishing on 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 fisheries. And just think that we can just eliminate them from the formula and everything it will be the same. Yeah. So for all the people out there eating tuna or eating uh, other species like predators like marlins or mackerels or, or sardines, just forget about keep on eating this if we remove sharks of the of the formula, right? So I I don't know if I answered the question. You did, you did, so. absolutely, absolutely. And I'm, I'm really excited that you said, that you talked about regulation and you talked about you know, nature and living systems becoming our regulator, which is what is happening right now. And hopefully, you know, it speeds up and we understand that because what has, in a way, uh, regulated all our actions and the way we use the natural world has been a bunch of belief systems created by us. But it's not nature that runs the show, right? Exactly. And, and, exactly. and living systems need to run the show. I always say that <clears throat> our main goal, if our main goal is always, if we have a golden rule that is to protect all these ecosystems and to protect the flows of energy in ecosystems, then mm-hmm. if that informs all our decisions and all our choices, then we're in a better place. Exactly. So why do we kill 100 or 140 million sharks a year? What for? Well, there is um, two main reasons. Um, and then there's like, more tiny reasons. The main two reasons are fins and meat. It's this trait where not only in Asia right now, we are um, in a need of uh, or a demand of, of these species or parts of these species. Uh, shark meat is being sold all over the world. We believe that it's for different reasons. In some areas, it's because um, there's a lack of other species and it's what's left and it's, and, and it's worth it. You go out there and you catch a species where you are using the fin, you are, you are losing probably the liver, where you are using the meat, where you're probably using even the jaw as a souvenir, and probably sometimes even the, the, the leather that they have to create like different bunch of like boots or like um, bags or even belts, right? Yeah. But the main two thriving industries are meat and fins. And... I believe it's because of a lack of education. I don't believe that there's anybody or a majority of citizens that are waking up one day and saying, oh, I really need a shark steak. Yeah. I, I, I don't believe in this. Most of the shark meat, uh, even though I didn't try it myself, it doesn't even taste good. They, they, most of the shark meat of different species, they melt very fast and they de- accumulate a lot of heavy metals. So it's not a healthy, you know, choice for us, not sustainable, not healthy. And it doesn't even taste good. In Costa Rica, for example, in the research we did in Costa Rica, we've been asking locals there, how does a shark meat taste like? You know, mm-hmm. like you, you eat shark meat in ceviche, in casado con pescado, there is local dishes or, or plates there. And their answer is like, it doesn't taste uh, of anything. It's just yeah. like, we just like put on them like sauces and like vegetables and spicy things or even lemon sometimes. And we just eat it because it's cheap. Yeah. So those industries are, are 
are moving the overfishing of those species because we still have a demand for many different reasons for the lack of education and because of a necessity also of protein in many, many places, which this necessity of protein can be understood. Maybe it's not healthy for them. We should find solutions for these people that rely on shark meat for survival as a protein. But for the rest of the world, when you travel to Europe, when you travel to United States and you yeah. find a, a normal supermarket that sells shark meat, um, oh, yeah. with, with people that can go to a supermarket and choose to buy good vegetables, you know, pasta, different type of, you know, like lentils or stuff like that. We are just promoting to it something that it's not healthy. But sometimes people just choose to eat this because they don't understand. They don't know and it's cheap. And everybody wants to save money to have a better iPhone or to do a better trip or holidays or have a better car or have a better house. So we just save money yeah. on our health, personal health and earth health. Yeah. And we just don't demand the governments, the, you know, industries like supermarkets or chains or like um, brands to explain us better what we are eating. You know, we are just like stupid species that we just like follow whatever is trendy yeah. and whatever is cheap or, or that we we can save money to do other stuff. So I think that we are in a need of a better message out there, a better education for everyone to be accessible and understandable. I think science, uh, the science that we have of sharks and, and the overfishing of those species, it's more than enough. And instead of in, like improving laws or like including species in societies on different, you know, um, national laws, international laws, you know, international congresses, we should be taking them out. The problem is that not enough citizens or humans in our planet understand yet what's going on and why they matter. So we just keep on, you know, selling them in different ways. There's countries that sell souvenirs of them. Like yeah. you can buy a jaw, you can buy, a, you know, they either trade it or like taxidermy a head of shark to put in oh your wall. Yeah. <laughs> and also here we will start talking about maybe also ego. Why people has an elephant in their wall or a, or a tiger or a shark? Like, what's the point of having a top predator species that regulates our ecosystem and our support system in our wall, in our house, in our yeah. wall, in our house? It's just like, it's just, it's just unrespectful and probably most of the times a misunderstanding of, of what it's our earth about. So I think that these two big industries, both fins and meat, we can address them mm. if we are good enough and we are, we don't need to be everyone. We just need to be the right ones out there talking about the topic in a more accessible way, clear way and, and a way that we touch, you know, the, the soul of, of humans until we won't be able to, to touch their values. They yeah. won't do anything about it, but we're still on time. Like we're still on time. Oh, good. We need so much hope. When you start looking at the reality of all these systems that we've created and, and how screwed they are, it's, uh, sometimes it's, it's really hard. It's really heavy. It's a, it's a big burden to, to take on. And it's hard yeah. to, to keep the hope up. So thanks for saying that. Of so what's, um, let's, before we move on, bioaccumulation, you talk a lot about that and most people don't necessarily know what it is that certain mm -hmm. components travel through the food chain. And so what happens in sharks? What, why is it an, beyond being an unhealthy choice because it's bad for the ecosystems, why is it unhealthy for people to consume larger fish or larger mammals or, or sharks? Okay, so well, first of all, uh, we need to understand what a top predator means, and of course, a top predator means other prey, right? So there's a chain, and of course, uh, heavy metals in general, and to be concrete with mercury, are natural elements. They are out there. We just like change their course or make them go faster to our ecosystems, such as the ocean, through you know like big industry and like warehouse and rivers. All of these made more mercury to be faster in the ocean 
in concrete areas where there's different like or resident species or highly migratory species that are gonna eat prey that have this mercury. Um, a predator, or in this case a shark, not only bioaccumulate but biomagnificate this mercury. Meaning, the more prey it it eats, the more mercury they have. And why this happens is because they live a they, they life is longer. They have a long lifespan, and they eat a lot of prey in their lives. The smaller the species in the ocean, the less mercury mer bioaccumulation and even plastic, you know, microplastic bioaccumulation yeah. or toxicity they will have because their life is shorter and they eat less prey. So it's like we don't need to be very smart to understand this. It's just, just a matter of like understanding how long we live and how many things we eat, like ourselves, no? So a shark will target also predators that are below them, such as yeah. marlin, such as tuna, some of them they target mammals, some of them they target reptiles, such as tiger sharks, but all of them are, you know, preying, uh, feeding on prey for a long, long time that also we accumulate a lot of mercury. So they be accumulate and be magnificate this mercury during, during this life, their, their life, right? So then after what happens, of course, not all the species of shark have the same mercury bioaccumulation or biomagnification, because as we said, we have so many different species that have different type of, you know, roles in our ecosystem and that live in different areas. And then, of course, target different uh, prey. you know, all of them are different. So, of course, the more on the top of the chain, the more mercury they will have. So we can start the, you know, the ocean chain with orcas. Orcas are our ocean top predators. Yeah. Uh, thanks uh, to, I don't know, the magic of life, we're still not targeting orcas to eat their meat, uh, though they, they, they face other threats, of course, that uh, most of the ocean species face, like, you know, climate change, pollution, acoustic pollution, uh, ghost nets, etc. But we are targeting sharks. So the first shark that comes to my mind as a top writer, and I think that most of the people will know him, is the great white. The great white is even targeting other sharks. It's even targeting whales. It's targeting, you know, probably tuna. It's targeting, like, big species. So if we eat a, 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 a great white, of course we need to understand that the large spine is super long, and they will be all their life targeting mostly predators or species that will have a lot of mercury in them. Yeah, because there's also the Greenland shark that's like uh, one of the oldest sharks in the ocean that lives, I don't know, hundreds of years or something. Yeah. Right? Okay. So what are you doing right now? What are you working on? I know you released a documentary that was called Game Over Fishing and that you've worked with Robbie uh, Stewart in Sharkwater. Okay. Yeah, um, no. Uh, we released Sharkwater Extinction. Uh, that's a film of uh, Rob Stewart, our good friend Rob Stewart that uh, sadly passed out two years ago doing it. We were part of this film. We helped or we've been involved um, in several locations such as Costa Rica and Panama. This is not our film, it's, it's his film. Um, we are currently producing a documentary, it's called Game Over Fishing, mm -hmm. that we have been... Um, filming for the last six years right now in different uh, locations around the world. And we've been involved in different films uh, from different producers and, and characters around the world that are going to be out uh, in this upcoming year. Game or Fishing, our documentary is only going to be released uh, next year, probably. We are working with Andy Bayat, uh, uh, film director and filmmaker that has been working many, many years for BBC. He's the creator of Blue Planet and Planet Earth. Of course, he's not the only one involved in this project. We have many other like characters and people, such as Jonathan Nir, uh, the creator of Dolphin, uh, Human, and then different members from Nakawa Project. And this is our own project. This is what we have been working the most on the same time of working in different countries for shark conservation. We've been working in Costa Rica, we've been working in Panama, we've been working in Cabo Verde in Spain, and currently in Mexico, in Baja. Okay. Our main goal right now is to, to, first of all, try to research better what's the meat being sold out there in supermarkets and markets. We've been working in, in DNA and mercury 
levels because shark meat, sadly, it's mislabeled, which increased the issue on a you know consumer going to a supermarket and buying just a general word that says shark meat or like a thon that they use here. Yeah. And you don't know if it's a silky shark, a hammerhead or a mako. And I've, as I said, they be accumulate and be a magnificate different mercury because they have different roles in the ocean. So we've been focused on that because there's a big consumption in Mexico of shark meat. It's about uh, 30,000 tons per year. And there's a big exportation of fins too. And most of all, we've been working uh, specifically in mako sharks. We understood that mako sharks were not doing good because of their size on landings. They're getting smaller and smaller, and that's an indicator that something's wrong with this species. And they are targeted here, as in many other places. So we've been uh, working a big campaign and, and research about uh, mako shark fisheries in Mexico and their mercury. And trying uh, to get the best content and information and research and doing a small film to go to CITES, that's an international uh, congress happening this year in Geneva in August, to include them in the Appendix 2. There's a proposal for them to be regulated only for the international trade. That means exportation and importation. Yeah. It's the next piece that if we don't work in their uh, protection and, and better regulation, probably we are going to lose very soon. Yeah. They've been overfished in the Atlantic and the Pacific, and the stock assessments that we have from them are really poor and bad zone. And the indicators are telling us that we are we are losing it. We are we are losing it. It's a species that it's um, very target for the taste of its meat. It has a very good mus muscles, mm -hmm. like very similar to tuna. So there's a lot of countries that target mango shark because the meat tastes good. Yeah. What they don't know is one of the most predator sharks that we have in the ocean. And for example, our research say uh, or, or show that they have three times more mercury than the national laws allowed for uh, oh, like human consumption. Yeah. consumption. So we've been working also with um, medicine, with, with the medicine academic, like with doctors and hospitals here in Mexico in order to create more awareness in the country that they are eating and targeting a species that it's it's toxic for us and mostly for kids and, and women. It can it can uh, produce a lot of like health uh, issues such as like uh, loss of memory, um, bad respiratory, um, heart issues and and yeah, like it's super toxic for us. So the goal this year is to include them uh, and do a good lobby for them in CITES to try to regulate this international trade at the same time that we are working in one of the countries that target the most uh, mancos for their meat. Uh, How do you spell that, CITES? CITES is C-I-T-E-S. C-I-T-E-S. Yeah. This is so important for people listening. Um, if you don't know, go watch all the shark water documentaries. Uh, we have an episode, like episode seven or something of the podcast with Brock mm -hmm. Cahill. And uh, we celebrated the nice. life of Robbie. And and the work that Robbie and Brock and Rehi and all the other conservationists doing out there is the reason it's so important. It's because it's not only educating us as consumers and so we can make responsible choices, you know, and give our money to the people who are actually protecting life and protecting the natural world. But they're actually going out there and changing bills and changing regulations and laws and protecting all these animals. Right. I, I believe I don't know exactly, but shark water has managed to achieve a lot in that department oh yeah right oh yeah shark water was the one of the first movements um in order to to get the word for the sharks out there and the first conversations of sharks have been thanks mm. of rob stewart and in the first film he did even he's the reason i'm here today like if it was not for this film i probably wouldn't had the journey i had and move you know my ass from Spain to Costa Rica and, and start researching and understanding what was happening and finally creating a nonprofit and starting my, my own documentary because I wanted to do something like Rob. Rob inspired me in a way, and I believe that I'm not the only one, that change our lives, change yeah. uh, like feeling laws in many places and uh, created new movements, you know, the fin-free movement and 
and yet it's, it's still inspiring us, even if he's not uh, in a human body around us. He's he's out there. He, uh, like I feel oh, him yeah. every day <laughs> in different species, and and yeah, I mean he's one of the most inspiring uh, humans I've ever met, and I can say he changed my life for a better life and for a more meaningful life. And he he keep on inspiring me every day. Yes. Yeah, we miss him a lot. So where can people go and and how can people support the work you're doing? Well, there's many different ways people can get involved and support. Um, I think that nowadays the easiest way and something that we all have is the communication power in our hands. And, and, and in most of the cases, I would say that the human has more than eight hours a day their phones in their hand, sadly. Um, so social media. Social media moves tons of information, beautiful information, beautiful posts, call to action, suggest petitions, you know, uh, TED Talks, books, uh, reports. So first of all, use your social media for something else than just like taking cool photos or cool selfies. Like, yeah. uh, let's start to use social media as an education, uh, you know, platform that is free. It's amazing. It's just free. You have your phone, you are connected to internet, and you can get a bunch of uh, educational content out there that can inspire others to take other actions. So sign petitions, read, repost, like, uh, inform, you know. Then after, in our case, uh, for this call to action on supermarkets around the world or corporations selling shark meat, I think that the best action, super easy, that everybody can do is to check out the seafood section, whatever they are in the world, and see if they are selling shark meat. Either if it's labeled or it's labeled, that's information. And that's a, actually, that's science, you know, like that's citizen science yeah. where everybody can be involved. Go to a supermarket, seafood sections, check out if they're shark, take a photo, like tell us the location and the price. Then we will understand better where species are being, you know, demanded to shut down the consumption and approach all of these corporations in a very good manner to tell them what's going on with sharks, to educate them and to propose them to make a change. And then after we cannot do this in the right way, in the educated way, then let's do massive, you know, campaigns in order to shame them because any corporation in this planet should be targeted endangered species. So yeah. this is how you can get involved in an easy way, no? Like everybody can do this, come on. Then after, of course, you can join us as a team. We have team members all over the world. Some of them are involved in communication, journalism, design, even in the field camp, photographers, filmmakers, biologists, ecologists, teachers, uh, people that are just like attending into events, you know, like uh, different educational events that we do. I think there's, there's a lack of belief in, every, in each of us to understand what's our best skill. Analyze yeah. this skill and approach yeah. us and tell us, I'm good on this. And let's find where we can apply this into conservation because we are not enough. Of course, donations are always welcome. Yeah. We, we just don't have that much money. We are not rich. Of course, we are normal people that have normal works at this. I mean, we try to have a, 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 a salary that doesn't come from conservation because I also think that that's part of the issue of that conservation is not working. So in my case, I work in ecotourism. I, I take people out there to explore the oceans and to meet these beautiful species yeah. at the same time that I'm trying to inspire them, know better about these species, beautiful. and have my salary coming from ecotourism. Okay. So you can join ecotourism trips. I think it's super important to get connected with the ocean. Absolutely. Even if it's not only with sharks. If you're afraid with sharks, where can it? Sharks doesn't eat human. And after a minute being with them underwater, your mind and your perspective will change completely but there's a lot of different trips we offer um with marlins with manta rays with mammals that you can get involved and learn get inspired and take action and of course support us then is this after, in baja is this in baja yeah, California? we mainly run trips in baja in a near future we will be running trips in different locations uh but now mainly we are working in in different uh locations around baja california that is, i want to come it's huge <laughs> So, so 
One quick what question. Else? What else? One quick question. How do? do I know, uh -huh. as a consumer, that that a fish that's there in the supermarket is shark? How do I recognize shark? So, well, it's not that easy, depending on how it is cut, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, there's sometimes that it's going to be labeled as uh, shark meat. So then, of course, you need to ask which shark meat it is, etc. But we posted a bunch of examples on how shark meat normally look like in supermarkets. You need to look that it has like the cartilage most of the times if they are cut it, uh, like this, like the, the, the body of the shark just in circle. It yeah. will have the cartilage in the middle. So we posted a bunch of photos. Go to our social media, check out this post. Okay. And of course, in different countries, they present it in different ways. It's a matter of like also approaching us. Like I live in Spain. How can, can I find out uh, how the shark will look like here? But normally it's a very white meat, uh, except with the exception of mako shark. Normally it's more red. It's more similar to tuna. Mm -hmm. And it can be labeled as white meat, uh, white fish, uh, cazón, uh, bolillo in Costa Rica also, paletita in, in, uh, in, in Panama, uh, cazao in, in Portugal or in Brazil. And normally it's like big steaks um, that doesn't smell good. Of yeah. course, it's impossible if, the, if it's cut it like a fillet yeah. to go to the supermarket and if it's labeled as a fish to know 100% that shark, it's, it's hard. It, it, I mean, yeah. you need to take a DNA sample to know this 100%. But we already know different chains, uh, such as Publix, uh, La Comer in Mexico, Walmart, you know, um, Carrefour in Spain. Uh, there's a bunch of lists in our petition uh, in internet of different names of supermarkets that have shark meat there. Of Where's course, your petition? Where do we get it? Our Where... petition is in change.org and in our website. Okay, like gotcha. if you go to our game or fishing website, you can find uh, our petition, sign it, share it, you know, read it, uh, approach us to include another uh, supermarket chain or, or market or whatever you want to propose. Gotcha. Let's make we sure we... we... You send me all those links later so we can put them on sure. the show notes. Yeah, of course. We have letters if anybody wants to approach us and they find out that they, they have the restaurant in their neighborhood or supermarket in their neighborhood that they want to approach them and, and bring them a letter and becoming a member of us. We, we can deliver this letter with the official stamp of Nakawa and the, the right information for these corporations to understand why they, stoop, uh, they should stop selling shark meat of endangered species and what are the risks of selling something that probably has a lot of mercury, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of ways to be involved. Of course, we have the, the different type of items and merchandising that are always trying to, to bring out the message. We we rather offer something for a donation, but just to ask money, sometimes it's hard and I don't like it or we don't like it. So we have a bunch of different campaign t-shirts, you know, eco-friendly ones that doesn't come in plastic, important too. Yeah. We have jewelry, we have, uh, we have campaigns of clothes hooks that these hooks were taken out from the ocean, from illegal fisheries made from park rangers in Costa Rica. So we take out different campaigns where people can become a close hook ambassador. And we, of course, we, we accept any other idea that somebody will come and tell us, I'm an artist, you know. We have been uh, supported by uh, painters from Spain or like, you know, artists from Mexico, musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody can join us. Maybe we didn't think about an idea or we didn't think about a way of like getting better the message out there. So we are always here to hear. Any idea is valuable. Uh, we hear everyone. Sometimes we are more busy, less busy, but we always try to respond and answer everyone. So I think that even though these people that is out there are a little bit lost and they feel that they are missing this tribe or this team can find this in us. And it's a matter of supporting each other. There's no one here in this planet. We all together uh, can really do and make a difference, but we cannot believe that one person is going to save the world because that's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to talk about that I haven't asked you about? Anything that... you'd like to share? Well, I would love to share 
with everyone my personal um, journey. Like, I'm from Barcelona. I'm a normal human, you know. Uh, I, I was just curious enough to go out there and try to understand what was going on. And since the moment that I started seeing with my own eyes how cruel we can be as PC and how egoist we are, I couldn't stop. My life has changed so much and it's hard, you know, to witness all these, like, bad behaviors and, and actions that we have as a species in this planet. And I believe that with constancy and love and, and bringing people together, we can change this. And we should change this. We, we should wildify again this planet. And this is something that Rob Stewart was telling all the time. He had this dream on why instead of protecting, we try just to bring back, back wild, you know? So I would love to tell people, go out there. Nature is just amazing. It's better than sex or drugs. It's the best love you can find out there. It's just mesmerizing. It changes yeah. perspective. And animals are just like lessons. Every time you go out to the ocean, you will learn something. Every day will be different. It's just a, a scenario that it's constantly changing and moving. And it encourages you to be the same. So my message would be, for everyone that is disconnected to the ocean, find the time to connect with the ocean, with nature, with the species, in the way that you can. Everybody of us can find the right time and the right moment to go out there and connect with nature. And I think it's something we are missing from big cities, from the people that are just like, you know, connected with media and, and a little bit losing the beautiful part of this life. And it's, and it's free. It's there for us for free. You know, some expeditions, of course, the people will say, ah, no, no, it's not free. If I want to go to see sharks, I need to go to an operation. Of course, you need to go to the right people, with the right people, with the right knowledge to do a safety activity with different species. But in general, you can go to a mountain and walk and hear the birds, or you can go to a beach and hear the waves, and you can go to a river, you know, and understand how the ecosystem works. Mm. So my message will be like, Go out there and try to understand better nature and fall in love with it. Because I think that my lover and my love and my everything, it's nature. And I don't, I don't imagine a world where nature is dying, you know, or the nature doesn't even exist. Like, I, I don't want to live in this world. And there's so much love out there that people doesn't even believe or or understand so go out there you know feel it connect with it and do something about it oh my god thank you for your words <laughs> no so moving you gave me goosebumps thank you so much i needed of that course. i needed that anytime absolutely it's the best remedy for everything and it's the biggest love and you know unconditional Nature just loves you up. Yeah. 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 <sighs> well, Rehi, this was awesome. So excited to. Thank you so much. You know, Tell me anytime I chat. can help. If you need anything else, uh, I'm. Sometimes I'm busy. Sometimes I'm more free. But I'm always willing to help anybody to take out the messages in the best way I can to help others. And we are here to support you, to support each other and, and to be better humans. That's that's the same best here, thing we same can Same here. Do. We'll figure out a way to, you know, support one another. I want to help you guys with whatever Thank tools you I so have, much. you know, in my skill set. Uh, and so Nakawe Project and Game Over Fishing. I'll put all the, the links on the show notes. And... Um, Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your Thank work. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much course. for your time. Of course. Yeah. It's so good. Uh, anytime. Okay? All right. Give me, give me posted if you need a Spanish uh, interview. I'm going to be some days out in the ocean. But in July, I'm back some days. And August, I will be also on land some days. So just let me know. And, oh, sounds awesome. Yeah. I'd love to do a Spanish one for the for the Spanish podcast. For sure. Perfect. Thank you very much. Have a Muchas nice gracias, day. Muchas gracias, Regi.